Hello, my name is Graham, and this is my fifth year competing in first on um, Team Triple Two Fifty One, the Children of Apollo. And my name is Mike. I'm the head coach. Graham's uh, my son. My other son, Dean, is behind the camera, and we've been involved, as Graham said, with first for five years. Um, we've been wanting to do something with our own table for a while and didn't have the space to store a single sheet of plywood. Um, in some research that I was doing with the boys, we found some inspiration from a Republic of Pi YouTube video from about 2013. They were inspired by the directions that you can find online still from the Landroids um, circa 2010 for a take-apart table. Um, Graham, their panels, they ended up using take-apart hollow doors that were 32 inches, um, but I had shared with you guys we wanted to try to keep costs down, so we went to the ReStore, where you can get stuff. It's kind of like recycled building materials for cheap, right? Can you talk a little, little bit about what we've got set up here? Yeah, so um, we went out to, uh, we went out and bought uh, four used uh, doors, and we cut off the ends of them. Um, and there's about this much on the end that we cut off um, and we got uh, this wood that we used for the walls um, and we painted everything black and sanded it um, so that it would be good for the robot and for us to use. The doors are hollow core, uh, they're actually 24 inch doors. Um, the Landroids plans, as I said before, they encourage you to do 32-inch um, doors, which maybe would be about this, this much bigger. But we cut them to 54 inches in length um, because you'll see elsewhere in the video, it leaves a nice shelf here on the north wall. Um, we can put things or robots or um, night bus models or other Lego, whatever, mission models there um, on this north wall. And it also helps support the cooperative mission um, this year with City Shaper, uh, the bridge, of course, so it can hang out um, over. Uh, as Graham noted, we got the lumber from Home Depot, uh, f 96 inches on these two by fours. The two end walls uh, at east and west are uh, 45 inches, so all done out. Um, you've got a 48 by 96 uh, outside uh, dimension on the, uh, the walls. They're a full three and a half inch height, uh, which is that uh, first regulation three inches plus or minus half an inch, so we're legal there. And as Graham noted, um, they're all recycled hollow core doors that we sanded and then painted. Um, we were looking last night online, and uh, if you're gonna buy these new, they can range in anywhere from price from about $30 to 90. We were able to get these four panels for $5 each, which was a really nice savings uh, for us. So uh, we, we again bought those from like a secondhand uh, thrift shop and home goods store that also has uh, discount building supplies and materials. So one of the questions that we had gotten on FLL Share and Learn on Facebook was how uh, a robot would handle the three joints that are in here. And um, we discovered as we've set this up and taken it down a couple of times, we've got some flexibility. There's a little bit of tuning involved, Graham, right? Yeah, so um, whatever you're using to uh screw in the bolts, you can, uh, if one of the t uh, doors is riding above the other, you can unscrew the, um, the bolt that would be right here, and you can even them out by unscrewing and screwing them back in to change their heights. When we started the project, we thought that we might just let the uh, boards kind of float underneath the wall, but we did find that um, doweling them with a dowel jig, we got it for about $30 at Home Depot, uh, there's three uh, dowels in each joint and those pulled them very, very flush. It was super easy. We did the doweling of those nine in maybe 15 minutes or so using the jig uh, and that made all the difference on keeping things flush. Um, Graham, you've been at this for five years. What's some of your advice to maybe to newer coaches or younger teams, rookie teams, that are worried that the, a joint like that might throw off their bot? How do you protect against something like that or a bad board at competition? Yeah, so really, uh, you shouldn't need to worry about this when uh, driving your robot and your attachments. This is something that can happen in competition. There can be uh, seams in the boards. Or Imperfections a, in a sheet like of a, a knot um, or something like that. And that goes for the walls too. There, uh, we have experienced knots in the walls in competitions. Um, but it's really useful to use gyro sensors and color sensors, both of which are uh, good for keeping the bot uh, where it needs to be on the board. Um, color sensors can 
uh, be in, it can sh uh, show you where you are on the board and gyro sensors just keep you uh, going straight from where you started. I'm a high school teacher. I teach graphic design and communications uh, and advise the yearbook program. Lego is kind of like our, our family's soccer, FLL is, and uh, I very much wanted a table for us for home use and off-season use. We might have our team over here. We practice at a different facility for our club. Um, when I saw the Landroids plans, uh, they're absolutely fantastic. Uh, they're very detailed. It involves a little bit of more woodworking um, knowledge and engineering knowledge than I have. I tend to be somebody that kind of sees the solution in my head and I'm not dealing so much with measurements and this and that. Uh, just like, hey, I'll, I'll, that, that, that looks like that's right to put that bolt there. So all of that is to say, it's a little rough around the edges. The walls we stand by, they're right on spec for FLL. That was non-negotiable. But you know, this finished edge on the north wall is a little bit rough. Um, I missed a bolt hole over on the, uh, on the east end uh, because my measurements were, were just slightly off. But it did the job. And so I, the reason that I'm confessing that to everybody in the audience is that you coaches out there that don't have extensive woodworking backgrounds, you can do this. If I can do this, you can do this. I needed to use a circular saw um, to ta take off the tops of the doors uh, on the north wall. And then really everything else was just drilling uh, and measuring. So again, if I can do it with um, just a smidge of something resembling woodworking skill, uh, then you could definitely do it as well. So one of our goals was to keep this uh, table manageable for transportation to demos, um, maybe to the pits of a competition if we wanted to carry our own table, but also to be able to put it in the back of a minivan or a closet. Um, the biggest pieces are these 96 inch uh, pieces of lumber, but everything else gets pretty small. Um, Graham, can you talk a little bit about how this would be managed by our team? Yeah, so each of these panels is uh, from 10 to 15 pounds each. Um, and it's, uh, we wanted to make it manageable for everybody on our team to carry so that we could, uh, everybody on the team can set it up. Um, it's useful to have a drill um, to do all of the bolts to put it together, but it can also easily be done with um, Allen wrenches uh, for the bolts instead. The bolts that Graham was talking about are two inch uh, brass bolts. They're quarter 20 bolts, it's a standard size. We pre-drilled holes, um, two on each corner for the lumber for the walls, and then different ones along the um, where it's reinforced on the inside of the panel. There's just a thin strip of uh, some, some wood on the inside of that that we can bolt up through. So there's a bolt here and here, also here and here, all the way around the board. There's about, I think, 26 bolts um, overall. Um, super fast with a drill and a hex bit on it, but the Allen wrenches can do as well. How long does it take us to set up? We've done it a few times now. Uh, it can take anywhere from five to ten minutes uh, if, right. you're, if you're moving with speed. The only thing that's under it is a six foot uh, plastic table that we can fold up and put away. Uh, it could be done with some sawhorses. Uh, if I had sawhorses going across from north to south, I might think about putting some longer two by fours just to support the joint here. Um, maybe zip tie those to a sawhorse or bolt them on or something like that. But we have a spare table um, that can go as well. That certainly the table itself would take up a little bit more space uh, when we're transporting it. So sawhorses for the back of the van would probably be a pretty good idea. So one thing we've realized is that uh, it's not very good to lean on. Um, and our team does that a lot when we're talking about missions, when we're working on them. Uh, and it's going to be difficult to teach yourself not to do that. But um, that's one of the only few things that is bad about this board. I feel like this is a setup that if we take care of it, it's going to take care of us for quite a while. Um, there are boards out there that use two inch thick foam board, wall insulation board. Uh, it's two, two inch by four foot by eight foot. I've seen plans uh, for people using those. One concern that I had is a, a falling bot. If something uh, dropped onto the table, could it dent that foam uh, permanently? And then you really got a problem, uh, much more significant of a problem than, than maybe these joints would present. Uh, so we decided not to do that. Again, as Graham said, dealing with, I think these panels average about 13 or 14 pounds. Uh, our smallest members could carry one individually, packs up into the van, and, and we're highly mobile that way. So we're, we're liking it. Again, a shout out to the Republic of Pi and their inspiration video that we found on YouTube. Uh, and before them, the Landroids for their outstanding plans. Um, highly encourage you guys to take a look at their plans. We kind of went our own way, did it just a little bit rougher, uh, but the outcome was great for us and we're really looking forward to using it. So thank you and have a great day.